Now, breaking news from WRAL. Coverage you can count on. We do have breaking news this noon. A deputy shot and killed a man outside UNC Health Johnston Hospital in Clayton. What happened in the moments before the deputy pulled the trigger? The WRL breaking news tracker was there as crews rescued two men from the Noose River. What authorities say they did to make themselves easy to find. And we have a Tiger sighting at the U.S. Open. What tournament officials say about having Tiger Woods here in Pinehurst? We begin with breaking news out of Clayton this noon. UNC Health Johnston Hospital is on a modified lockdown after a deputy shot a man in the parking lot this morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Renee Chu. And I'm Jeff Hogan. Sky 5 brought you the first pictures of this scene during our 6 a.m. news, and we've been on that scene ever since. This is a live look at that situation right now. WRL's Chelsea Donovan joins us live on the ground with what we know about what happened there. Chelsea? Yeah, Jeff, this is still, uh, just about six hours later, still an active scene behind me here at UNC Johnston Health. Let me step aside so you can see here. You can see that crime scene tape and those flashing lights. Kind of look at that black SUV. That's the main entrance here at UNC Health Johnston, and that's where we understand that this deputy-involved shooting took place around 6 a.m. this morning. Now, here's what we know. The Johnston County Sheriff's Office says one of their deputies was leaving the hospital in his marked car. He went to leave in the parking lot in that patrol vehicle when he was confronted by a man in the parking lot. Now, the sheriff's office says the suspect tried to grab the deputy's gun and a struggle took place where the deputy did regain control of his weapon. Several shots were fired. That killed the man, of course. Right now, we don't know the name. His name has not been released. We understand that will be coming from the SBI. Now, the hospital did not close at all for patients and staff, but we understand that Several hours it was on a modified lockdown where security was assisting patients and visitors where they needed to go. We understand that that lockdown lifted around 1130. A hospital spokesperson also told me no patients or procedures uh, were impacted today. Now I'm still working to learn the name of the deputy who was involved in this shooting at the Johnston County Sheriff's Office. We understand that that deputy is on administrative leave with pay. That is protocol while the SBI comes here on the scene. They're actually here now to continue this investigation. Live in Johnston County, Chelsea Donovan, WRL News. And happening right now in the WRL Life Center, police have identified the seven-year-old boy that was killed in a drive-by shooting in Fayetteville on Friday. This is Zion Gibbs. He is a student at Benjamin Martin Elementary School. He was shot and killed. This happened just after midnight on Friday at a home on Danish Drive. We have video uh, from the WRL breaking news tracker when this happened. Zion was taken to a hospital in critical condition on Friday. We've learned that he died today from his injuries at UNC Chapel Hill hospital. It is not known if anyone else was shot in this. Police say this is an active investigation. They are still searching for the shooter. If you have any information, call police. Two men are back on land safely hours uh, after spending time stranded on the Noose River overnight. Take a look at this video from the WRL Breaking News Tracker. Crews are searching for those men for nearly 12 hours at the Noose River in Smithfield. Officials on scene say the men went paddle boating around 5 o'clock yesterday and got lost. They were pulled out of the river around 3 this morning. The men called a relative after sunset when their rubber boat began losing air. She called rescue crews when their phone battery died. Um, had some friends get in a kayak, go down the river, and got lost and had to be found. Anyway. Officials say the men did exactly what they should have by wading in the water and did not try to find their way back on land in a rural area. Neither person was hurt. A suspected hit and run driver turned herself in to Chapel Hill Police this morning, and now she's telling her side of the story to WREL. Chris Lovingood spoke with her this morning after she left the police station. And Chris, what did she have to say? Well, Renee, all morning we were showing viewers a photograph of a driver police thought hit a bicyclist on Franklin Street. 26-year-old Brianna Beasley saw herself in the news, she said. That's when she said she surrendered to police around 8.30 this morning. Now, I did talk to her on the phone briefly this morning, and she says she saw caution cones on the street and thought she was just going around those when she heard a thump. When I heard a thump, I did stop, but I did not get out. All I did was look in my, my rear view mirrors, 
and I didn't see anything, so that's why I kept going. I didn't know that I physically hit anybody until midnight the next morning. Mm. And, and you- when it when it had hit the news. Beasley is a mother of four, she says, and also mentions that people were even going up to her children at school and telling them to call 911. Beasley says that she is set to be appearing in court tomorrow. You have a live look right here at Pinehurst, where practice rounds for the U.S. Open are underway. You see lots of fans out there. It is a chance to see some of the big names in golf, including one who was on those putting greens today. WRO's Chris Lee is live in Pinehurst with what's up with that Tiger sighting today, Chris. Yeah, Jeff, I can't wait till you join me out here. You know that the U.S. Open is a huge deal. Everybody out here is excited to be here. And it's an even bigger deal when Tiger Woods is involved. It becomes an even bigger spectacle. Of course, he's one of the headline names who will play here at Pinehurst Number 2 this weekend. This morning, though, he was able to hit the links for a few practice rounds with big names like Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth, and Ricky Fowler. Woods himself is a 15-time major winner, including winning this U.S. Open championship three times. But over the past few seasons, we've seen his decline as he ages and deals with some nagging injuries. Woods received a special exemption to play here this week, but the USGA says he's no charity case. He can still win this whole thing. But I would tell you that we didn't invite Tiger to give him a victory lap. We invite Tiger because he can still play, uh, and he knows he can still play, and on a track like this, a little easier walk than maybe some of the other tracks. I mean, if you look at his ball speed and ball striking, I um, I fundamentally believe you're, we're going to see a competitive Tiger Woods, not just a uh, thankful Tiger Woods, and it's a uh, That's what the game loves. I mean, just like the rest of us, he brought me closer to the game watching him and my family as well. So it'll be an exciting week. So we're all excited to see that and see what happens. Tiger Woods is supposed to talk to the media tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Later on today, though, we're going to hear from Raleigh native Webb Simpson. Right now, if you look over here, this is the putting practice green. A lot of guys out here getting ready for this entire week. So we'll see what happens. Keep you updated here at Live Shots all day from Pinehurst. Number two, Chris Lee, WREO Sports, Southern Pines. All right, we'll be down there soon to join you. WRL is your home for the U.S. Open as it returns to Pinehurst beginning today. Our team has complete coverage on your phone, tablet, and TV. Once the first round tees off Thursday, WRL's Gerald Owens, as well as myself, will be down there leading our coverage from Pinehurst. This could be a million-dollar night for the North Carolina Courage. The Courage advanced to the championship game in the soccer tournament, playing out here in Cary. They'll play the U.S. women, a group led by former national team players like Heather O'Reilly and Allie Krieger. That match starts at 7 p.m. Then the men's championship game will happen after that as Lombombonera will play Nani FC. Make sure to tune in to our WRL 11 p.m. newscast to see which teams end up taking home the million-dollar prize. Closing arguments in Hunter Biden's federal gun trial will begin when the jury returns from lunch. Biden's lawyers rested their case shortly after a court began in Delaware this morning. Biden did not testify on his own behalf. He has pleaded not guilty to illegally purchasing a handgun and lying about his drug use on a government form back in 2018. We'll take a closer look at the trial so far and what's expected in closing arguments coming up in our next half hour. Today, former President Donald Trump is expected to appear virtually before a probation officer. This comes after he was convicted on 34 felony counts of falsifying business records last month. He faces anywhere from probation up to four years in prison. Trump's defense team is scheduled to submit their sentencing recommendation on June 13th. He is scheduled to be sentenced July 11th. The Republican National Convention is set to start just days later on July 15th. Homeowners in Cary will weigh in on possible changes to property taxes at the town's budget meeting tonight. The proposal would decrease the actual property tax rate, but because property values rose during Wake County's reevaluation process this year, most people expect to pay more in property taxes. If the tax changes go through, the town would generate more than $43 million in additional revenue from property taxes. I think it will discourage uh, families from, uh, from coming in here. Kerry has typically had one of the lower tax rates uh, amongst the surrounding towns, uh, but I suspect with this increase, we will be uh, right up there with the, uh, you know, with the rest of them. All 12 cities and towns in Wake County have proposed tax rates that are lower than what you paid before, but still increase tax bills for people who saw their property value increase. 
Wake County did the same in the $2 billion budget it passed last week. Property in those municipalities pay taxes to both governments and could see both taxes increase. Tonight, Durham County leaders will vote on a budget to spend your tax dollars. Teachers and support staff for Durham Public Schools are pushing for better pay. Organizers from the Durham Association of Educators are urging county commissioners to pass the school system's budget with a $27 million funding increase. The county manager proposed a $13 million increase. We'll let you know what happens. That meeting starts tonight at 7. Next at noon, dramatic video released from this weekend's rescue of four hostages held by Hamas. How many Palestinians were killed in that operation? Also, Moderna is making progress combining a COVID shot with a flu shot. How it's outperforming the current standalone versions. Plus, some rare insight into singer Celine Dion's stiff person syndrome. She explains it in detail for the first time. Kat? And the cold front continues to push away from us. Behind it, we've got some changes, but they're only temporary. I'll let you know when our next big system arrives coming up. Keep watching WRAL News over the air, Channel 34 and Spectrum Channel 1257. The United States wants the United Nations Security Council to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. A draft resolution on the table would urge Hamas to accept a deal that would result in a full, immediate ceasefire with the release of hostages. That ceasefire would start at six weeks and be extended as negotiators make progress. The vote could happen as soon as today. The United States has been criticized for blocking several previous votes on U.N. resolutions calling for an end to the fighting. This pressure comes as the U.S. has resumed airdrop of aid into Gaza. A cargo plane dropped more than 10 metric tons of meals on Sunday. That brings U.S. aid to more than 50,000 metric tons of assistance. Israel has released video of a dramatic rescue of four hostages from the Gaza Strip over the weekend. Local health officials say that operation killed 274 Palestinians. NBC's Raf Sanchez has updates from central Israel. Within an hour of being rescued in the heart of central Gaza, those four Israeli hostages were flown here to this hospital. Doctors say they are in generally good condition after eight months of Hamas captivity and the chaos of that daytime raid. The Israeli military says special forces stormed two apartments simultaneously about 200 yards apart. They found those three male hostages in one of them, Noah Argamani, the young woman seen around the world being kidnapped on the back of that motorcycle in the other. The commandos giving the code words, we have the diamonds when the hostages were in their hands, but the danger was not yet over. The IDF tells us one of the vehicles carrying the hostages actually broke down amid an intense gun battle. They had to be transferred under fire to another vehicle before they could be taken to the helicopters. Now, while there are celebrations here in Israel, there is searing grief inside of Gaza. The health ministry says around 270 people were killed by Israeli fire during that raid, including at least 60 children. The Israeli military says that Hamas deliberately holds civilians inside of crowded civilian areas. Raf Sanchez, NBC News, Ramat Gan, Israel. And happening right now in the WRL Live Center, this just in 10 members of the 1983 NC State men's basketball team are suing the NCAA. They're seeking $25,000 in damages plus interest for unauthorized use of their name, image, and likeness. The lawsuit was filed in Wake County Superior Court. It's requesting a jury trial. The lawsuit claims that the student athletes' value to the NCAA does not end with their graduation. The NCAA did did change its rules back in 2021, allowing players to earn money off of their names. But the 1983 team falls far beyond the reaches of that lawsuit. In a statement, they said we deserve to be compensated for our contributions that have significantly benefited the NCAA. Michelle, thanks.
A combination COVID and flu shot is performing well in clinical trials. Moderna is the first drug maker to have positive results in the late stage trials of a combined vaccine. New results show people who got the combined shot showed a better immune response to both viruses than those who got both of the current standalone shots. Participants say side effects of the combined vaccine are similar to what they felt with the solo shot. The combined vaccine won't be out for this fall, though. The study has yet to be peer reviewed. But a two for one shot instead of having to get two shots, I think most people would say, hmm, all right, we'll take that. Why not? We'll mm -hmm. see how it plays out. There's a breeze outside, which is making it feel nice, but Cat mm -hmm. Campbell in the WRS Severe Weather Center, the heat is still there. It's still there, but it's about to get a lot hotter than this. So if you think today is hot, just wait until we get to the weekend. The weekend features the hottest temperatures so far this season, and that's going to come with some summer humidity, too. So today really isn't all that bad. It's a nice summer day, but of course, it's going to feel a lot more like June by the end of this week. Our normal high for this time of year is still 86 degrees. We're sitting in the mid 80s for our highs today, 85 in the triangle, 84 tomorrow, near 90 on Wednesday, and then it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and even into Father's Day that we really heat up. We're talking mid 90s. 94 Friday, 95 degrees on Saturday, and that doesn't account for the heat index. So let's take a look at a closer look at that. The temperature and the heat index aren't going to be all that different. Mid 80s for Tuesday, about 90 for Wednesday. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday that we really start to see the humidity build back in. And that means even though it's 94 on Friday, it may feel more like the triple digits. Same for Saturday, 95 with the heat index closer to 100. Make sure that your outdoor plans this weekend factor in a lot of water and sunscreen. The WRAL live camera network today, though, looks absolutely gorgeous. In Durham, the Bulls are back in town this week, 81 degrees. They'll have some drier weather ahead this week as well. 81 at the WRAL Azalea Gardens and 81 degrees as well in Fayetteville, where we've got partly cloudy skies. Feels pretty good today because the muggy meter is low and it just keeps falling. We're fluctuating in between comfortable and refreshing today with dew points near 50 degrees. That's great for June. Your pool planner looks good if you're headed to the pool this afternoon. I don't anticipate that you're going to be dodging any showers or thunderstorms. Should be around 83 at 2 o'clock and by 4 o'clock, 85 degrees. If you want to grill out for dinner tonight, it's a great night to do it. If you want to run by the grocery store, pick up your favorite grilling supplies, 84 at 5 o'clock. By 7 o'clock, we're right around 81 this evening. It's partly cloudy today. We're still watching clouds pushing out along this front and closer to the North Carolina coast. There are some lingering showers and storms today because that front is slowly pushing to the south and east. But we're going to see more sunshine tomorrow as the front continues to move away from us and we get a break from rain chances again. This week, it's dry Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, only a 20% chance for rain Friday and Saturday. Good news for the U.S. Open. However, if you've got a garden, if you've got grass, it's going to need some extra love this week, especially with temperatures warming into the mid-90s. Get the sprinklers out, get watering. You're going to need that for the gardens this week. Here's your seven-day forecast. Low temperatures are in the 60s and 70s. Highs in the 80s for a few more days. Enjoy it while you can. We've got those mid-90s on the way for the weekend. Saturday, 95 degrees, a 20% chance for rain Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for Father's Day. Father's Day doesn't look all that bad, mostly sunny, 92 degrees. Hopefully, Dad is a big fan of some summer heat and humidity. If not, maybe make those plans inside for Dad's this weekend. <laughs> So today will be our cool weather. We'll make the most of it, right, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Durham County Commissioners are expected to vote on next year's budget today. Coming up at four, we are breaking down Durham Schools funding request and how it stacks up to other school systems. Then at six, WRL Investigates reports on excessive fees and aggressive tactics, getting the attention of state lawmakers, what they want to do to put the brakes on predatory towing. And next at noon, Kia is recalling hundreds of thousands of SUVs before the front seats catch on fire. We'll have the details for you right after the break. Plus, what you can do if you're struggling to pay off your credit cards, and you're certainly not alone. The new percentage of people with seriously overdue credit card debt and why it's significant. Will Smith's Bad Boys boosts the box office, and Apple is set to announce its new push into artificial intelligence. Those are among today's business headlines with Aaron Rayal. 
Apple's big developer conference gets underway today. It's expected to showcase the company's push into artificial intelligence. One highlight is said to be the introduction of a new AI-enhanced version of the Siri Smart Assistant. It would turn Siri into more of a true digital helper with control over features within the app. The developer conference will also showcase Apple's latest operating systems for everything from Macs to iPads and watches. Kia is recalling more than 400,000 Telluride SUVs because the front seat could start burning. The seat's control switches may become misaligned and then stuck if hit hard by something. There's a possibility that could lead the seat's electric motor to run continuously and overheat. The recall affects some Kia Telluride models from 2020 through 2024. No accidents or injuries have been reported, but one owner says the driver's seat caught fire while they were driving. And it was a big win for Will Smith and Martin Lawrence at the box office. Their Bad Boys Ride or Die rang up $56 million in ticket sales over its debut weekend. That was better than expected and provided a much-needed jolt to the summer box office. And Bad Boys is the first major movie for Smith after the infamous slap at the Oscars two years ago. Second place this past weekend went to the Garfield movie with $10 million. Those are your business headlines. I'm Aaron Rael at the NASDAQ Market Site. The amount of credit card debt that's significantly overdue is at its highest level it's been in more than a decade. That's according to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. It says the share of credit card debt that's more than 90 days overdue rose to over 10.5% for the first quarter of this year. It's recommended to contact credit card companies to negotiate interest fees and rates and long-term payment plans if you struggle with repaying that debt. Tonight is the culinary world's equivalent of the Oscars, the National James Beard Awards. Several North Carolina restaurants and chefs are nominated. Crawford & Son in Raleigh is one of five restaurants nominated for Outstanding Hospitality. Dean Neff of Seabird in Wilmington is a finalist for Outstanding Chef. Jamie Davis of the Hackney in Washington, North Carolina, is a finalist for Best Chef in the Southeast. The awards are tonight at 7 at the Lyric Opera of Chicago. The event will be live streamed. Raleigh's Pretty Wasps will be cooking at the event. Back-to-back -back shark attacks in Florida are raising concerns all along the nation's beaches. We'll look at the odds of it happening again and what biologists think happened there. And as Hunter Biden's trial comes to a close, we're taking a closer look at the closing arguments jurors should hear this afternoon. First, here's a look at the winning lottery numbers. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Defense attorneys rested their case in Hunter Biden's federal gun trial without calling the president's son to the stand. And both sides now have one last chance coming up this afternoon to address the jury. Rebecca Castor has more on the closing arguments. The first of two legal battles for Hunter Biden is coming to a close, but first attorneys have one last chance to make their case. Hunter Biden's defense team wrapping up its case in his federal gun trial after choosing not to call the president's son to the stand. His fate will soon be in the hands of a dozen jurors, but first, prosecutors and defense attorneys are making their final pitches to the panel. Even if he gets convicted here, he's got a good chance of avoiding a prison sentence. That calculation can change if... A defendant takes the stand. Prosecutors allege Hunter lied on a federal gun form in 2018, saying he was not a drug user. They used witness testimony, text messages, and Hunter's own memoir to show a well-documented history of addiction. Defense attorneys don't deny the first son's substance abuse issues, but argue he did not consider himself an addict when he bought the gun. There are many people who consider themselves having been addicts, but don't like using that term to describe them. So it is not a very black and white scenario. First Lady Jill Biden, as well as other members of the Biden family, returned to court Monday to show their support. Analysts say the family's ties to Delaware could play in Hunter's favor during jury deliberations. And he's a popular figure and his family is popular. There's always the possibility that uh, you're going to have somebody who engages on that jury who engages in jury nullification. 
Hunter Biden also faces federal tax charges in Los Angeles. That trial begins in September. Some Raleigh neighbors discovered this over the weekend. Uh, their car window smashed. We have video of that. Now, this is the doorbell camera video that someone in a passing SUV threw a rock at a parked car. At least five reports have come in from the Falls River, North Ridge, and Quail Hollow neighborhoods. Residents say they discovered smashed windshields and large rocks nearby. One victim who wanted to stay anonymous says this is having a negative effect on people's routines. While I agree, that people's lives are not at risk here. Um, people's livelihoods are. I couldn't drive to work. And other people can't drive to work when their cars are non-operable because their front windshield has been smashed in. People have filed reports with Raleigh police but have not received updates on the investigations. We reached out to Raleigh police and are waiting to hear back. Our county by county coverage takes us to Johnston, Wayne and Chatham counties today. <laughs> To Johnson County we go. A bridge built during the Great Depression is getting replaced there. The bad news for drivers is the work will take more than a year. Work started this morning on the bridge along NC 210 near West Smithfield. You can use nearby Swift Creek, Cleveland and Crantock roads as detours. This construction is expected to last 13 months. They should reopen it by July 2025. Leaders in Wayne County want to talk about guns and gangs. Goldsboro City Council will hold a special meeting tomorrow to talk about gun violence. That meeting starts at 6 p.m. It will also be streamed on the city's YouTube and Facebook pages. The mayor also announced a violent crime task force that will begin examining gang activity. A task force will meet this week as well. And Chatham County Aging Services is holding two events today to help you avoid scams. A summer scam jam kicks off with a shred event. A shred truck will be at the Pittsburgh Center from Active Living from 8.30 this morning until 12.30 this afternoon or until the truck is full. They are also giving away 25 shredders at that event. Then at 1.30, several guest speakers will be talking about how you can avoid scams. Those talks are happening at the Chatham County Community Library. We are less than a week away from the start of the U.S. Olympic swim team trials. Several local swimmers are preparing to head to Indianapolis to compete for a spot on Team USA. Three Marlins and Raleigh swim team members qualified for the Olympic trials this year. It's the hardest event in sports. People say it is, and I agree, um, but it, it is my best. It's just something I really enjoy is working on that technique and the speed and power every day. That's just crazy that there are going to be 30,000 people in the stadium watching a swim meet. For the first time ever, the event will be staged on a football field at Lucas Oil Stadium, the first pool to ever be built inside an NFL stadium. We'll also be watching for Triangle native Claire Curzan and Kerry-based Ashley Twitchell. Both are looking to make it back to the Olympics. Team USA will also head to Triangle Aquatic Center in Kerry for practice before heading to Paris. WRL will have you covered there with public events to watch Team USA get ready. U.S. Olympic swimming trials in Indianapolis will air right here on WRL. You can watch Saturday, June 15th. That's this Saturday through next Sunday, June 23rd, to see who is headed to Paris for Team USA. Still to come, the medical condition that can silence a voice as big as Celine Dion. The singer describes how it feels to have stiff person syndrome and... It's kind of comical in a way, because the way it was framed, it was like the, this great art heist, you know? And it, it just had, it, like the Thomas Crown affair. Except the art came from the walls of a food restaurant. We'll explain what happened coming up. For news, traffic, and weather of the day, make sure to download the WRL News app. Legendary singer Celine Dion is talking to today's Hoda Kotb in an NBC exclusive. She's opening up for the first time about her rare neurological disorder diagnosis, stiff person syndrome. What was happening to your voice when you were trying to sing and... It's like somebody strangling you. It's like somebody's pushing your larynx pharynx this way. Oh. So it's like you're talking like that and you cannot go high or lower. It gets into a spasm. A preview of Hoda's exclusive interview with Celine Dion is airing on the Today Show tomorrow morning. Then tune in for the hour-long special that airs tomorrow night at 10, right here on WRL. 
happening right now in the WRL Life Center. We're following some breaking news out of Miami, Florida. Officials say there are multiple patients after they were in this building. This is an apartment building. You can see a massive smoke and flames coming from this building. Firefighters tackling this from the outside. All firefighters have been pulled from the building. Two firefighters are being treated for heat exha- exhaustion, but you can see uh, just how badly damaged this is. This started at about 8.15 this morning. Officials say the fire is on the third floor. Many residents that live here are elderly and had to be rescued from their balconies. They say some residents were transported to the hospital. Others were treated at the scene. But that's not where the story ends. The Miami Police Department also said a man was found shot inside that building and was transported in critical condition to the hospital as well. But as far as the fire, they say there are multiple patients. Uh, This is breaking news. We're going to stay on top of this and bring you the latest as we learn it. Michelle, thanks for the update. The latest heist in the art world could be happening in your local Taco Bell. Paintings have been disappearing off the walls of the franchise location since 2015, more than a decade after artist Mark T. Smith was commissioned to create them. Now copies of his work are selling for thousands of dollars on eBay. Art dealers say it's likely driven by technology and nostalgia. I think in an age of social media, it's definitely bragging rights, and that's a big part of it. It's easier to fence something that's a print rather than uh, an original. Not that I would know personally. The artist says he sees it all as a huge compliment from the public. Reddit posts that alert buyers to new paints and prints have speculated this was an inside job, saying employees may have grabbed those prints when locations were renovated. Two shark attacks in Florida, 90 minutes and a few miles apart, have people asking, could it happen again? Next at noon, a research biologist shares his theory about what happened. And speaking of beaches, meteorologist Kat Campbell has the forecast for our North Carolina coast up next. And happening right now in the WRL Live Center, following some breaking news, a military plane carrying Malawi's president, vice president, and nine others has gone missing. It went off the radar. A search is underway right now. Malawi is a country in East Africa. The vice president was on that plane along with nine other people. Aviation authorities say they lost contact with the plane when it went off radar. It failed to make its scheduled landing at an airport. The president of Malawi has ordered a search operation, and he has canceled a plan trip to the Bahamas. Back-to-back shark attacks in Florida have beachgoers on edge. Both incidents happened in the Florida panhandle last Friday. First, a 45-year-old woman was bitten by a shark, losing part of her left arm. Then, just 90 minutes later, about four miles away, police responded to a call about a second attack on two teenage girls. Two of the victims are critically injured. Emergency officials say they have a fighting chance. One of the teens had injuries to her right foot and is stable. People at the beach applaud the emergency responders for jumping into action. And Renee, biologists say you're more likely to be struck by lightning than bitten by a shark. Claire Jones reports those biologists have an early theory on what may have happened. This is a very, very rare event. Dr. John Carlson, a biologist researcher with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, says there's still a lot of questions surrounding Friday's shark attacks in Walton County. We're still, from a research perspective, trying to put put the pieces together. Carlson says it's unclear what kind of shark or sharks may have attacked. I can't say whether it's the same shark or multiple sharks. And like I said, we have so many different species here. Bull sharks are probably the most likely shark that would attack a human. And the the reason for that is because they're a larger shark and they feed on larger prey. As far as the reason for the attack, Carlson says it was likely a case of mistaken identity. This time of the year, there's quite a bit of bait fish very close to the shore. And sharks are attracted to that. It's it's their normal prey and they'll move in shore to feed on that. So it's just one of these incidences where just because of, again, there's a lot of bait in the water or the visibility of the water is very poor. that the shark became confused and mistaken a person for its for its natural prey. The news of Friday's shark attacks did not stop beachgoers from getting back into the Gulf on Saturday. I think there's definitely been more people today that have been more aware of what's going on in the water. Um, and, and everyone's kind of looking out for each other while also still having a good time. 
So I understand you get, you know, on the coast, we see them, mm -hmm. track them, but the Gulf, that, that worries me a little bit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You don't see them all the time in the Gulf. True. Thankfully. Well, even if you hear about shark attacks, you know beaches will still be packed, at least people on the sand, as warm as it is. Meteorologist Kat Campbell in the WRL Severe Weather Center, and it's packed out in Pinehurst right now for the start of the U.S. Open. Oh, yeah. People are out and about. And what a gorgeous day. North Carolina really showing off for everybody in town at Pinehurst Resort and Country Club today. They are gearing up. They've got some practices. We heard from Chris Lee earlier. 76 degrees there right now with a dew point of 58. So we are welcoming the U.S. Open with phenomenal weather today. 58, the dew point is great for this time of year. It feels very comfortable there. If you are golfing today, maybe you're inspired by the golf happening in town. It'll be around 83 by 2 o'clock. We wrap things up with a look at a few of the headlines we are following for you today. The Johnson County Sheriff says a man who tried to take a deputy's gun was shot and killed by that deputy. It was breaking news as this all unfolded outside UNC Health Johnston in Clayton this morning. The sheriff says the deputy was leaving the hospital in his patrol car when the man approached and tried to grab the gun. The two struggled and the deputy fired shots hitting the man. The SBI is investigating. Ten members of NC State's 1983 National Championship winning men's basketball team have filed a lawsuit against the NCAA. They are seeking damages for unauthorized use of their name, image, and likeness. The lawsuit claims that the student athletes' value to the NCAA does not end with their graduation. The lawsuit asks for in excess of $25,000 in damages plus interest. Tiger Woods has arrived at Pinehurst ahead of the U.S. Open this morning. Tiger and the other big names, Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth, Ricky Fowler, all hit the links for some practice at Pinehurst number two. Woods is a 15-time major winner, including winning this U.S. Open championship three times. WRL is your home for the U.S. Open as it returns to Pinehurst. Starting today, our team has complete coverage on your phone, tablet, and TV. Adults are finding their inner child again, and the sales receipts prove it. Market research shows in the first four months of the year, adults bought more toys for themselves than for anyone else. American adults spent about $1.5 billion on toys in that time. The top buys were trading cards, Legos, sports toys, and the plush huggable Squishmallows. A small tourist town in France received an unexpected gift from the U.S. National Park Service. Check this out. A buoy from the Dry Tortuga National Park in Florida washed ashore on a beach in northwest France. That's a 4,000-mile journey across the Atlantic. It now floats in the harbor near the French town where it washed up, displaying both the American flag and the flag of the French province where it landed. The National Park Service is quite happy about the turn of events and says we see a children's book in the making. Four people were hospitalized after a bull jumped a fence at a bull riding event in Oregon. Officials say this happened shortly before 10 Saturday night at a rodeo in the city of Sisters, just over 20 miles from Bend, Oregon. The bull escaped from the arena, striking and injuring four people while it ran through those rodeo grounds. The bull was eventually captured and taken home. Rodeo officials say all of the injured people are home now from the hospital. Today's pet of the day is a senior pup who does not act her age. Meet Lacey here. She's 11 years old, still has plenty of energy, curiosity, and she's always up for adventure. She loves people, is totally house trained, and behaves herself when left alone. Lacey does need to be your only pet, she loves walks and a fenced yard would be great, but not required. She's almost done with allergy shots and may need an annual booster. Wait till you see her sit up for treats. To meet Lacey, contact Love Mutts Rescue and you can apply on their website. Tonight, the men and women's teams still in the soccer tournament will play for a million dollar prize. The NC Courage will play the U.S. women and La Bombonera plays Nani FC. Our coverage of the tournament in Cary starts with our news at 4 o'clock. We have lots of local ties on the women's side in that, mm -hmm. so that should be fun to watch. It's the first year that they're in it, so a million dollars to the winners would be pretty cool. Lots of big sports happening mm -hmm. from soccer to golf to baseball. NBC News Daily is next on WREL, your next local news update in 30 minutes. You can always get breaking news updates anytime with our WREL News app. Get out there and enjoy a great day, some sunshine there before that summer feel and heat returns.
Keep watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257.